Hello and welcome to the West Ham Transfer Rumour Show and we've got it all in tonight's episode. Players that are set to leave West Ham, players that could leave West Ham, players that are rejecting the opportunity to leave West Ham as well as a couple of potential signings. But strap yourselves in because we're in for a really busy week ahead of the deadline on Friday evening. But the notepad is ready to rock and roll. Before we get underway, if you're new to the channel, please do subscribe and also drop a like on the video as well by clicking the thumbs up, regardless of whether you're new or not. Both things are free, it takes a handful of seconds and helps out this video, so thank you very much in advance of that. But we're going to kick it off with Kurt Zuma. Now, for the last two or three weeks, he was over in Dubai after the move to Ali Al-Shabaab fell through. However, today, he's travelled to Saudi Arabia ahead of a move to al Oliba. The medical is booked in. The deal has been agreed between Al Oliba and West Ham United. Now, it's a loan with an obligation. I'm going to do my best to explain this one because obviously Kurt Zuma has only got one year left on his West Ham contract. But the reason this deal makes sense for Kurt Zuma as well as West Ham to some extent, but definitely for Kurt Zuma, is to secure him a permanent transfer at the end of the loan. So the next season, this season, will be a loan move for Kurt Zuma, where West Ham will be paying 50% of his wages. Then at the end of the loan, it will turn into a permanent contract with no fee, and Kurt Zuma will then move on to his lesser wage. I don't know what that contract is. It might be a two-year contract, a three-year contract for him. But Zuma gets that financial security. That's why there's an obligation to buy in this loan move. Because if it was a loan with an option to buy or no option at all, there's nothing stopping the Saudi club at the end of the season turning around and saying, all right, thanks, Kurt, off you go now. So he obviously needs that incentive to take a lower wage, which he's getting at the end of this season in order to move to Saudi Arabia. So he's got that. The Saudis are getting a really good centre-back when fit and West Ham are getting half his wages off the books for this season. I think this is a deal that makes sense for Kurt Zuma. I think it's a deal that makes sense for West Ham. And I don't know enough about Al Oliba to suggest that. But I do know they're getting a really good centre-back. And I generally wish him all the best. And I hope, I hope this medical goes through. Otherwise, like I said, I think West Ham would be in a bit of a sticky situation. Because what do we do? Their window closes on the 3rd of September. So a handful of days after the English Premier League one. So we can still sell them after our deadlines pass. But should we fail to move him on? and he's here on the 5th of September, we either have to integrate him back into the first team, if there's a space for him in the, the squad that gets registered with the Premier League, or we're going to have to pay him off to leave. And that, that's a situation that gets a little bit ugly quickly, and I hope we can avoid that. So fingers crossed this move goes through. Now moving on to James Ward-Prowse, he's been linked with a move to Nottingham Forest. We're starting to get a little bit of clarity now, two games into the season, and it's told us a lot already. Before we played Aston Villa, it was a case of who's going to leave, a Gerd or Mavapanos. It was believed that at least one of them would go and we'd potentially bring in another centre-back. And it was a case of who's going to go, Suchek or Ward-Pounds. Now, I was completely wrong about this. I assumed it would be Thomas Suchek that was more likely to leave and ward Prowse was most likely to suit what Lord Pategi does. However, as we've seen, that's not the case. He didn't even come off the bench against Crystal Palace at the weekend. I expect he'll be involved against Bournemouth should he not be on the brink of leaving West Ham. But a difficult situation for club and player here because at this stage of his career, Ward Prowse can't afford to not be playing first team football regularly. And I think he's too good to be playing sort of on the bench at West Ham. I think he's better than that. So perhaps him leaving is the best thing for him. But also West Ham paid 30 million for him. He'll be on substantial wages at the football club as well. Probably amongst the highest earners. Not the highest, but he won't be far off it. He's still worth a lot of money and he'd still be a really good signing for somebody. Someone like Nottingham Forest, actually, I think he'd be a great signing. And you know what's going to happen. He'll go somewhere and finally score a direct free kick. Only West Ham United could sign the best free kick taker in the league. Have him for an entire season and he doesn't score a free kick. That is the most West Ham thing to occur. Personally... I think he will be here when the transfer window closes at the end of the week. I'll be surprised if he goes, just because I'd imagine our demand would be 20, 25 million. It's still a lot of money for somebody to stump up. But that might be the case, as in selling Ward Prowse, if we want to get Carlos Soler in. 
The media in Spain are reporting today that this deal has advanced and is close to completion now. Obviously, at the end of last week, the rumours were Everton have entered the running. Would not surprise me. I don't think they need Soler. I think they need a miracle. But he's available. He wasn't in the latest PSG squad. He was on the bench in their first game. Wasn't in their squad at all in the second game. It's quite obvious Soler's available. And this is what he will cost. Loan with an obligation of 20 million euros in the summer. I expect him to join West Ham which contradicts my feeling with Ward Prowse. I just don't see anyone stumping up the cash. I, my prediction, actually, I'll, I'll do that at the end. Let me just write it down, prediction. Right, I'm, I'm going off tangent here. So I'll, uh, I'll add it to the end of the video for anybody that's interested. Moving on to Tammy Abraham. Now, this is one player that I'm not keen on seeing at West Ham. I think a few years ago, yes, but not so much anymore. He had that horrific injury last season as well. Not to say he's not a good striker, not to say that he won't be okay from here on in. I just think it gets a bit risky and there's quite a big financial contribution to get Tammy Abraham over to West Ham. But the Italians are adamant, but it's from the Italian side of thing. I should stress, the Italian media are adamant that West Ham really want Tammy Abraham. We're making moves for him and we're likely to get him. Part of me is a little bit uncertain if I believe that story or not, because, I mean, him, Folk, Folk, Folk and Antoni would give us a decent attack. But saying that, if Lopetegui and Steiden has watched Antonio in the first two games and decided, nah, 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 we need another striker, I would completely understand. I think he's been poor in the two games. And it's not to say that he won't have good games this season. I'm sure he will. But if they've changed their opinion on Mikel Antonio off the back of two games this season... I wouldn't blame them whatsoever. Um, I thought we'd see a motivated, souped up beast mode Antonio. We've definitely not got that at, um, at all. So I could understand if they're in the market for another striker. But that may massively depend on moving on Danny Ings. Nobody's coming for him by the sounds of it. Jacob Steinberg is reporting that West Ham are considering releasing Danny Ings. So paying Ings' contract up in order to leave the club. Now, some of these players have clauses in their contracts to allow the club to release them for a certain fee. So if Danny Ings is entitled to four, five million pounds between now and the end of his contract, which expires next summer, there might be a clause in there which says West Ham has to pay 65% of that or something in a lump sum in order for him to go. Obviously, the other thing we can do is effectively not release him, just bring another striker in, continue to pay his wages on a weekly basis, and he just goes into the under-21s, which, again, it's a situation I don't really want to see, especially for somebody on 125 grand a week, reportedly our highest paid player as well as Kurt Zuma and possibly Jerry Bowen at this point. I'm not sure we can afford to be doing that. He has been in the squad, though. I think what is t interesting regarding Ings is, unlike Gerd, unlike Corne and Guillermo, Ings has been in the team and he came on against Aston Villa. But the reports are that we are prepared to just rip up his contract and pay him to leave the club in order to free up the space and potentially the bit of money that we'd save on him as well. If there's a clause in that contract, I do not know. Obviously, we're not going to know that. Only the club will. I struggle to believe that there isn't a club that would take Danny Ings on loan. A bit like the Kurt Zuma thing where we maybe pay part of his wages. And I think Southampton were keen to do something like that. I think they were going to get him on a free transfer. The issue was Ings didn't want to leave. Ings said, no, thank you. I'm going to stay at West Ham. I'm going to fight for my space. And it's not a financially motivated thing. It's not because he's grabbing money. Because as part of that free transfer to Southampton, West Ham were going to subsidise the difference. So if they gave him 60 grand a week, we we're going to give him 65 grand a week. So he'd still get the same take-home pay while at Southampton. And he rejected that move. So it's not financially motivated. If anything, it's it's the opposite. Because you'd imagine the Saints would have given him more than a one-year contract. Maybe that was the issue. Maybe Southampton were only offered him a one-year deal and he wanted longer. I don't know. But it's, we certainly offered to subsidise his wages for this season, he rejected that move. I do have predictions. Nay Gerd, another player that supposedly rejected a move. The rumours are today that a Bundesliga club made an offer to take a Gerd on loan, and West Ham. It didn't necessarily say West Ham accepted it, but 
before West Ham could even accept it, Aguirre himself had rejected the move. So he wasn't interested, whether it's a loan move or whether it's a move to the Bundesliga. I think it's maybe the latter. There hasn't really been any links to him and Germany. It's back to fans who a lot of the clubs are skint because of the TV deals or he himself to go to Saudi. Now, the interesting thing here is Nia Figueroa's agent is the same agent as Kurt Zuma. So we know where a girl's agent is currently. He's over in Saudi. So in, I'm not saying it'll be a double whammy and he'll also join Kurt Zuma, but he might go out to Saudi and play for a different club out there. So one to keep an eye on, a girl leaving. And lastly is Freddy Potts, according to Express employee. He is set to join Portsmouth on loan. He was linked to Portsmouth last week and Wickham. And it looks like the club slash Potts have decided that Portsmouth is his destination. So we will wait and see. Now, I've actually spoken to a Portsmouth fan in the last few days to say about Freddie Potts, and he was a bit, eh, we've got plenty of central midfielder. It'd be a nice player to have, I guess, but we've got enough options in that area of the pitch. So, fingers crossed that we've made the right decision, but I've actually, I'm putting my Callum Marshall West Brom loan move to one side here because Callum Marshall Huddersfield looks like the right one. Scored at the weekend, again, scored in the EFL Cup uh, last week, and then he scored at the weekend in League One football. So Marshall's loan move is looking good. Patrick Kelly played for Doncaster. So the loan moves so far this season are looking okay, bar Heggie. He's the one that's not picking up any minutes at Motherwell. I'm going to give the club the benefit of the doubt with Potts going to Portsmouth. And I think it makes sense because... He's going to need two or three players to leave or be injured just to get on the bench with us this season. No, Alvarez was out at the Villa game and Potts still wasn't on the bench. So it makes sense. Irving's still ahead of him and I think we need Irving or Potts to stick around. But if Potts goes out on loan, I think we might see Irving stay unless Soller comes in. Anyway, prediction time. Let's have a little bit of fun. Goalkeepers, nothing. Fullbacks, nothing. Centre backs, I think I think Zuma will go, and um, whether he gets his move or we rip up his contract, I just don't think we'll see him back at West Ham. You know, the last two or three weeks, while the move broke down to Ali Al Shabab, he remained in Dubai. You know, the club didn't ask him to come back; he didn't want to come back. I think that's Kurt Zuma done with West Ham. A Gerd, I think he goes. I think he goes. He wasn't even in squad on both Premier League games. This is a £35 million centre-back. This is... It's almost a bit embarrassing for him at this point. And I think he looked good pre-season. You know, there was a lot of noise that he was definitely going. Pre-season, I think he looked quite sharp. Looked quite good. Looked like he understood Lopetegui's system. Villa game comes around, he's not even on the bench. That's quite telling. Um, so I think he's going to... He's going to go... I think we'll get another centre-back in. I hope we do. Going with just those three, unless they're really confident with Casey. No, I'm not against it. I think if it was Tadebo, Mavpanos, Kilman, and then Casey, I'm not going to complain too much because I would like a pathway for the youngsters into the first team. And at the minute, there isn't one for Marshall, there's not one for Potts or Earthy. They've had to go out on loan. So if we do make one for Casey only, I'll take that as a positive. But I don't know, I've got a feeling we'll get another centre back in. Moving into midfield. I think Potts will get his loan to Portsmouth. I think that'll go through. Soller will come in. I think Soller will come in. I think Irving goes. I think Andy Irving goes. He's not homegrown either, Irving. So I think he will be the one that goes. Whether it's on loan or a, a low transfer fee somewhere, I'm not sure. I think Kone goes. Again, I don't know where. Maybe Turkey or something. I think Kone will go. And I think that'll be it. I think Ings will still be here when the window closes. So I think centre-back and a solo will join. And I think Aguirre, Zuma, Potts and Lohan, Irving and Kurni will leave. But I think Ings will still be here. Just too expensive. It's not necessarily there's a transfer fee, but any club that takes him on is going to have to pay up a substantial amount of wages. I know West Ham are prepared to subsidise his wages for the next season. But let's just say he goes to... Let's just say Southampton come back in for him. I'd imagine he's going to say, well, I want my same wages. And West Ham are going to help you out for the first year. But come year two, you're going to have to give me 120 grand a week. And I think that could be 
a bit of an issue and a sticking point. So I think Ings will remain here. Anyway, that's it. That's the latest transfer rumours. A little bit of news in there as well. Gonzo will be back with you first thing in the morning talking about these and any updates that occur throughout the evening. But thank you very much for joining me. Before you go, please do drop a like on the video by clicking thumbs up. Subscribe to Hammers Chat. And we did our Bournemouth Cup preview earlier so do check that out basically we both really want want to win this carabao cup We've got similar 11s we'd like to see as well we go check it out and get involved and i'll catch up with you tomorrow